Joining us for a conversation is Morgan Lextrom, the CEO of Silver Hammer Mining. Mr. Lextrom, thank you for joining us today, sir. Thanks for having me again, Maurice. Always a pleasure to be speaking with you to discover the latest exciting developments on Silver Hammer Mining, which has a growing portfolio of top tier potential assets in the USA. Before we begin, Mr. Lextrom, for someone new to Silver Hammer Mining, please provide a brief introduction and the opportunity the company presents to shareholders. Absolutely. So Silver Hammer is only about a year old in the last couple of days here, and we're building a top tier silver mining and exploration company by looking at US Western USA past producing silver and gold assets concentrating on silver, but some of them have gold. One of our, our, our main asset, the uh, flagship silver strand is in Idaho. It's in the Coeur d'Alene district. It's within the same district that Heckle and Coeur got their start in the same rock formation that Lucky Friday is. And these huge monster mines, it's barely been touched. We're exploring that now. And then we transition to other two exciting assets. One, the Eliza asset in Nevada. This is a past producing asset from the 1800s. No one's gone back with modern exploration and looked at this. We're seeing high grade all over the site, high grade silver, copper, lead, zinc, sniffs of gold. So we're exploring that in haste as well our Silverton asset, another past producing silver asset from the 1930s. Again, no modern exploration on that one either. So when you look at a portfolio of assets like what we have, low risk, high potential tier one jurisdiction assets, and then the management team to complement myself being a mind builder and tons of people on our board having multiple discovery in their background as well as capital markets. Speaking of top tier potential, let's begin today on the flagship Silver Strand located in Idaho. What are the latest developments there? Oh, it's starting to get exciting at Silver Strand for us. Um, you'll see some press releases coming out in here in the short order around what we're planning and what we're doing here in July and August and September. But, you know, we're going to be following up on the drilling we did last year and looking at some new new ideas for the for the mine site and how to expand and how to make that big this year. I really do believe this is the year that Silver Strand gets big. It gets that huge oomph, that potential that we've always said it has. And, you know, being so young and really only drilling in November last year, we had a lot of time to hone in the drill targets and look at what we're doing. We're also going to be looking at running some geophysics and we'll talk about that more in a press release, but that's going to help us compile with the mag survey we did last year and look at these high grade targets in the Coeur d'Alene district in the Rivet formation and has never really been explored before like this. So not only do we get an exciting area, the area that, you know, Heckle and Coeur got their start, we now have an exciting asset as we always have, but we really have more excitement this year because now not only can we drill, we are looking at the broader scope in that area. You know, speaking of big, this is a forward looking statement, but what kind of potential do we have before us on the Silver Strand? Oh, well, obviously I can't give too much forward looking on that, but you know, when, when you look at the mines around the area, you look at a mine like Lucky Friday, they've mined down to 1800 plus meters and are still going. They've been going for almost a hundred years. They had gold on the top like we do. They have silver like we do. And they've been going for that long. And they're in the Rivet formation exactly like we are. They're on the same trend like we are. Again, this silver strand mine just was such a small little scale mine before and they weren't able to consolidate the district and the whole, the whole strike. Now we have five and a half kilometers consolidated and hasn't been done before. Well, hey, there's a lot of different techniques we can use to start exploring. I mean, last summer we started getting hits all along surface, all on that five and a half kilometers of gold, silver, highly mineralized, you know, up to 12 grams gold, up to 255 grams silver on surface. So yes, there's huge exploration potential here. And also because it was a past producing mine, we're, you know, with my background in mine building, I'm looking at like, okay, how, who do we bring in at the right time? How do we put this back into production? When do we do that? What does that look like? So we get a holistic view on this. You referenced news flow. When do you anticipate the next news flow on the Silver Strand to be released? Oh, pretty soon. <laughs> pretty soon. <laughs> I, like I, I imagine it'll be fairly soon in the next week or two. We'll get some. We'll get some news going, and then we'll also have you know, like we always say, we're going to start drilling. So we we're going to announce that and and our contractor and all that fun stuff. So there's there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of news flow coming out of 
Silver Strand in Idaho coming into August, September, October, November, December, leading up into the new year. So we're, we're looking forward to what we see there. And, you know, it is the year for potential for discovery. I mean, we could be looking for other shoots. We could be looking to go down strike. You'll just see that in the press release. We don't know. <laughs> well, it sounds exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Leaving Idaho, let's visit Nevada and go into the Hamilton Mining District, which hosts the Eliza Silver, Gold, and it could add Copper Now project. What are the latest developments on the Eliza, sir? So we finished up a soil sampling campaign. We sold the north portion of the property and the south portion of our property. And in hope, in life soil, <laughs> we uh, tested with soil sampling the north and the uh, south portion of the property. And we're just compiling those results right now. And from what I see, we're pretty excited. So we're going back out to do check samples. We're getting back out there to do more soil samples, infill sampling, that kind of stuff. You'll see some press releases coming out of there in the next number of weeks here. But again, that whole area has been super exciting since we've got it, since we've put our boots on the ground. I've been out there multiple times myself and it's really going to help us hone in these drill targets for, you know, in the, in the foreseeable future here. Well, you answered my next question. You said in the next couple of weeks, we'll expect a press release. Let's leave the project site and step into a different arena here, the commodity cycle. What are your thoughts on the current market conditions? I like any any time the market starts fearing recession and, and uh, capitulation like this has been going on, you, you do get a drop in commodity prices because, you know, people are flocking to cash. They're flocking out of everything right now. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is, tech, energy, it, everything's going down. But this is a typical, a very typical feeling when the sentiment is not great for investing. I mean, personally, I believe that a lot of people lost a lot of money in crypto and now are, are kind of regaining their foothold. They're going, okay, wow, we just raised, you know, $3 trillion or $2.5 trillion. Where can we go next? And so you see this, like, this downward spiral. I think we'll see that till maybe the end of summer. And then typical to these markets and economic growth will eventually start happening again. We're not only going to see a price appreciation, you're going to see that in commodities. Energy and commodities, I'm talking like, you know, uranium, coal, uh, silver, copper, gold, these are these are high level commodities that are going to start bouncing again. And when they do, oh boy, look out after any recession. I mean, you look at 2008 and then into 2000 coming into 2012 there, you, you had some major gains and same out of this last one. It's it's a cycle. Um, we'll see what the Fed does with the interest rates. I think personally, I think they're going to start tapering it off maybe after one or two more raises. We, you know, we we keep saying we're in a recession and once people start to believe that, well, hey, economic growth kind of dives, and we've seen that already out of the Atlanta GDP estimates being negative now, so. Well, you know, fear also produces opportunities. Mr. Lecture, why is this the right time to become a shareholder of Silver Hammer Mining? You know, with Silver Hammer, it's, it's such a unique opportunity to join a company that's really in its infancy still. You, you know, you have three past producing projects in two of the top jurisdictions in the world, but also the management team to complement it and a methodical approach. You know, we're not just going out blasting out a bunch of drill targets and, and hoping the market's going to get better. We're looking at things on how we make this better for people. Hold on. My son just came in here. Hi buddy. How are you doing? Uh, are you going to come say hi? Okay. Come on in. So you, know. so your son believes in the opportunity. Please introduce him to us. This is uh, my son, Gabriel. He's a little sick right now, so he's at home with daddy, but uh, he believes in silver too. I think he likes these, uh, do you like these silver coins? Yeah. <laughs> Want to own some silver coins? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Lots of silver for this one. Okay. You go sit, you go sit upstairs, buddy. See? Yeah. And I'll come up in a minute. Okay. okay. Yeah. You go get a yogurt. Go. Thanks, bud. Good job. And off Gabriel goes into the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Going upstairs to get yogurt. Um, so the interesting thing about Silver Hammer's position right now is at Silver Strand, we have an existing underground. Last year, we rehabilitated it. We drove a new drift for um, a, new, a new underground tunnel to make it easy to understand for drilling. So that allows us to avoid a ton of the permitting issues that happen in, in these projects, but also to avoid the overburden drilling. So instead of having to go through, you know, an extra two or four or 600 meters of overburden to get the right angle, we can drill really close to the past 
production and really close to the mineralization that we found last year, it also gives us an opportunity to look for these new potential shoots and all these other areas that, you know, our mag and our geophysics and, and our geologists have, have started to find. So yes, we are, you know, I like to say we do things at a, at a low cost, but have high impact and rehabilitating that underground and getting back in there. I mean, it speaks volumes to having this team, you know, with myself, with, with Lawrence Ralston, with Ron Burke, with Jonas Lang, like all high level executives that can make this big. Mr. Lexstrom, for someone that wants to learn more about Silver Hammer Mining, please share the website address. It's www.silverhammermining.com. And uh, you can get a hold of Christina Pilon. She's our head of IR, our investor relations person, as well as myself at any time. I love taking meetings and, and phone calls and can always, uh, can always answer questions. Oh, there's a little munchkin back. There Come back in, guy. Mr. Lexham, it's been, Mr. Lexham, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. <laughs> Wishing you and Silver Hammer Mining and your son the absolute best, sir. Thank you very much, Maurice. You as well. <laughs> bye bye. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.